Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover uh, the important features of recurrent neural networks and why are they so special? Why do they make them extremely special compared to the vanilla feedforward artificial neural networks? All right, so let's get started. So feedforward artificial neural networks are so constrained with their fixed number of inputs and outputs. If you guys recall, when we trained, let's say, a basic uh, convolutional neural network, we had a fixed size input. So we, let's say, for the Fashion MNIST data set, we had 28 pixels by 28 pixels, and that's it. That's all what I have. It's so constrained. And what we had to do is if we wanted to, let's say, test our artificial neural networks on a new data set or a new image, what we used to do is that we used to resize our image to, to fit into that specific 28 by 28 pixels. And that's actually kind of kind of like kind of basic. It's actually very, very basic because us humans, we can see basically anything. We can feed in whatever input. We can feed in, in a series of inputs. We can feed in a ton of, we have a lot of flexibility in the input and that's most importantly in the output as well. So for example, again, as I mentioned, if we have a CNN, we'll have a fixed size input image, let's say 28 by 28, and we'll generate a fixed size output, which is, let's say, classes or probabilities, for example. Feedforward artificial neural networks have a fixed configurations, which means we have the same number of hidden layers and weights. So basically, once our network is trained, once we train it, once we have all these weights, once we know all these values, that's it. You know, it's just fixed. Okay, you can't change it. There's no dynamics in there. And it doesn't even capture time. So you are constrained in the input, you are constrained in the output, and you have constrained as well in the actual architecture, and you do not capture time. You know, it's just super basic. So recurrent neural networks, that's, you know, the, um, the major advantages that they offer over feedforward artificial neural networks is that first, they allow sequence of vectors which means now I can have can I, now I can have sequence in inputs now I can have sequence in outputs and I can have sequence in both so now I can have a lot of dynamics and then, then I can have a lot more or capture a lot more intelligence compared to a basic vanilla feed forward artificial neural networks all right so if you guys are a little bit still confused let's take a look at practical examples so again, what makes recurrent neural network so special? Let's get started. This is our one-to-one -one vanilla networks. We, few, we used to feed in an image and the output was simply a cat. That's it. We have, you know, let's say, let's say another image of a dog and the output will be a dog. That's all what it is. And we can use our basically um, feed forward artificial neural network or what we call it the vanilla network to perform regression or classification based on the type of the output. So if you are, if the output is, let's say, zero, zero or one, or maybe, let's say, multiple categories, that means there are gonna be classification. If my output is continuous, then we're gonna have regression, okay? So that's the first type. The second type of recurrent neural network, or kind of, I would say, the second category or application that we can use recurrent neural networks in, is what we call it sequence input and output, which means now I can have a series of inputs and a series of outputs, or what we call it many to many. So if you guys can see here, now I can have, for example, a specific application is, let's say, for language translation. Now I'm translating, I'm learning, let's say, artificial intelligence, and that's our translation in Arabic, for example. So now I have a sequence of inputs, and, and basically the network has to understand that this sequence means something so there is actual dependency on the past because for example now i need to know my subject is it like a singular is it plural is it like you know like a male a female so the entire there is an entire context okay that you know the recurrent neural network has to understand to be able to come up with this translation in arabic or whatever other language okay so that's one application is that we have multiple inputs and we can have multiple outputs or a sequence of inputs and a sequence of outputs. That's a major advantage. The, okay, let's take a look at another application. For example, my, I might have one to many, which is what we call it sequence output, which means 
Now I can feed in, for example, an image of a cat, which means I have only single input, and the output might be a sequence of output, which is mean, means, for example, uh, one major application is what we call it image captioning. That means I'm feeding in a, an image of a cat, and the output will be, let's say, sequence of words. Like, for example, that will be the output. Cute, gray, and white cat. And that's actually one massive, amazing application of recurrent neural networks as well. All right, and what about the last one? I hope you guys were able to guess it, which is basically the opposite of this. Now I have many to one. Now I have sequence inputs, okay? For example, I can use that to perform some sentiment analysis. For example, I can feed in an input, I'm really enjoying this course, for example, and then the network will be able to understand what I mean by this. And that's what we call it the sentiment analysis. Now I can get a feel of, okay, is that review a positive review or a negative review? And again, this is just a glimpse of what recurrent neural networks are able to perform or able to do. There are tons of other applications, but that's the overall idea. Now, basically, instead of having just pure vanilla one-to-one -one mapping, now I can have multiple sequence of inputs feeding sequence of outputs. Now I can have one input feeding a series or a sequence of outputs. Now I can have sequence of inputs that are feeding only one single output. And again, that's pretty amazing and very, very special when it comes to recurrent neural networks overall. All right, okay, that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, I'm gonna walk you through the recurrent neural networks mathematics. So it's a little bit gonna be, I'm gonna dig a little bit into the equations. So please stay tuned and please enjoy TensorFlow 2.0 Practical Advanced. And I'll see you guys in the next lecture.